Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about earthquakes and something called the elastic rebound theory and basically think about why we have earthquakes and why most of them occur along these plate boundaries that we've talked about before. So I got up here at the top all three of the main types of plate boundaries we've talked about, the convergent plate boundaries in which this plate here is hitting into this plate here. Think of this as an overhead view. So whenever they hit together, that's where we get our mountain ranges formed. That's where we have our subduction zones. That's where we have most of our volcanoes form. Uh, this middle one here is showing you a divergent plate boundary in which this plate on the left is going to the left. This plate on the right is going to the right. So they're moving apart from one another. And this last one here is our transform plate boundary in which this plate on the left is heading in a northwards direction, this plate on the right is heading in a southwards direction. We're going to focus on this type of plate boundary because I feel like it illustrates the elastic rebound theory the best. So down here we have our transform plate boundary. And once again what's happening, this plate to the left is going to the north, this plate to the right is going to the south. Now we're going to focus on what is actually happening between these two plates because these plates are not just slowly crawling along they're actually stuck together and they're stuck together because they're rigid surfaces between one another there's actually too much friction here for the plates to move so step number one in the elastic rebound theory is let's just say the plates try to move but they can't once this decides to type. Alright, so the plates are trying to move, but they can't. They are trying to shift this direction. They're trying to shift that direction, but they can't because there's too much friction buildup. Now, over time, as they try to move but can't, they're going to store what's called potential energy. So the plates store potential energy. And if you think about it, the more potential energy they store, think about what kind of effect that's going to have on the size of the earthquake. That will be part of our lab tomorrow. But basically they're going to store up this potential energy and uh, over time, we're, we're talking 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, they could just sit there in this place and not move. But eventually, the plates are going to overcome that force of friction and they're going to slip. So let's say eventually plates overcome friction and they will slip. Gotta love how fast this computer is. Alright, so now what we have, instead of them being right next to each other right now, this plate here to the left has shifted a little bit to the north, this place, plate here to the right has shifted a little bit to the south, and basically that's where you get your earthquake from. It's one quick motion, one almost instantaneous motion that the earthquake will occur. Now if you have, in our case here, if you have a fence row that goes along this plate boundary here and it goes in a horizontal fashion, the right hand part of that fence row will actually get shifted or cut off to the south. And the left hand part of that fence row is actually going to get shifted to the north. So you can actually see the effects of this on the surface along what are called fault zones. And we'll talk more about faults uh, in the coming days. But just to give you a visual of how this is happening, right here we have essentially the area between the two plates. Here's plate number one on the left, here's plate number two on the right. This one on the right is going northwards, this one on the left is going southwards. So basically these plates are stuck together. There's a lot of friction here. They're very rigid surfaces and they're going to try to move, but they can't. All right. You see that the road here is actually starting to bend a little bit and that's due to those plates trying to move. Over time they're going to continue to try to move until finally they overcome that force of friction and now you have this plate here that has shifted to the north this plate here that has shifted to the south and if you're driving a car on this road here you're obviously going to have to take a sharp left and right to continue on that road or if you're coming from this direction you have to take a sharp left and then right to continue on that road but this is pretty much an instantaneous thing and once this happens this is where you get your earthquake 
and this is called the elastic rebound because the crust is actually resetting itself in a new place but it's in the same shape think about a rubber band if you stretch out a rubber band far enough it'll snap but it'll retain its original shape its elasticity allows it to do that so tomorrow we are going to look at how the amount of potential energy stored will affect the size of the earthquake